Hi everyone. In today's video, I am going to be talking about the threats to the internal validity of a research design. Why is this important? Now when you are doing your literature review, you will be coming across hundreds of literature. You will use many of this literature as a reference to build your theoretical foundation of knowledge. However, when you are going through the past literature, you must be able to critically review that literature. Presenting a critical review of literature that you have studied will impress your examiners and your supervisors or readers of your research paper. Similarly, your own research design will also be tested for its internal validity. A study design is internally valid if it is free from non-random error or bias. A study design must be internally valid to also be externally valid and to produce accurate findings. In today's video, I will talk about internal validity and then in my next video, I will talk about the identifying of threats to the external validity of research design. Let's get started. The first threat to the internal validity, which specifically refers to whether an experimental treatment or condition makes a difference or not, and whether there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So that is what your internal validity is all about. So the first one is maturation. Maturation refers to changes within individuals that result from natural, biological or psychological development. Within individuals, let me give you an example. Let's say your research project is studying individuals and you are doing so over a period of years. Now, if the project lasts a few years, most participants may improve their, pers their performance regardless of your treatment. So it will not be your treatment that has resulted in the improvement of performance. It may be due to other factors which you have not been able to recognize correctly. If I take an example of systems and processes that might have changed over time. So let's say you are researching how much money people spend on watching movies and you are quoting literature where a researcher has only studied people who used to go to cinemas way back in the 80s or 90s. But you are not taking into account how the process of movie watching has changed over a period of years through the coming of the online platforms. So these are a couple of different examples of how a research should be critiqued for maturation and similarly how your research design should take into account the maturation process of either the research participants or the systems and processes that you are studying. The second threat to the internal validity is selection, which refers to how people were chosen for the study and if they participated in an experiment, how were they assigned to groups. This is of course an important bias which may result in selection of comparison groups. Let's take an example where you are trying to study what is the impact of divorce on women's mental health. However, because pregnant women are sensitive, you tend to omit them from your research. This kind of bias has to be recognized in research. You may have done it with good intentions because pregnant women are sensitive and your ethics approval may not be for pregnant women. However, because you are missing out on an important population, pregnant women are also women and they also may go through divorce and they also may have mental health issues because of the divorce. You need to identify this. Whether it's your research or whether somebody else's research, you need to recognize the bias that occurs due to selection. Let's take the third thread. The third thread is referred to as history or historical events that are extraneous forces that occur while the study is in operation and may interfere with its implementation and outcomes. Let's take an example. Let's say you are studying how well people are trained to deal with earthquakes. But you take up a study 
where the research participants actually went through an earthquake and they learned better because of the experience compared to other participants who simply trained for the emergency but never experienced it. That kind of comparison is unfair and it is affected by history because a certain part of the history allowed the research participants to experience the emergency compared to others. The fourth bias that results or the fourth threat to internal validity is called instrumentation. Unless the measures used to collect data are dependable or reliable, the findings are unlikely to be accurate. What does this mean? Let's take an example. Here you are trying to research how satisfied is the city council with the segregation of household items in recycle bins. To that effect, you use a Likert scale to gauge their satisfaction. You can see a Likert scale with smiley faces or sad faces is there on your screen on the extreme right. Now, although a Likert scale is a usable scale, it may not provide you with the required information of how satisfied the council is, just an indication. You will not get detailed information of if they are satisfied or if they are not, to what extent it is and why it is so. So you have probably quoting studies from past research which used a Likert scale which may not be scientifically robust in this regard. So in your research, you need to avoid quoting such research or identify the weaknesses of past research and make sure that those weaknesses are addressed in your research. The next one is the attrition. Attrition is another word for loss of data, which occurs when participants do not complete all or parts of the study's data collection instrument. This is unavoidable. Let me assure you. It happens every now and then, especially in quantitative surveys, when you are not monitoring the participants' response. Qualitative interviews, focus groups, of course, because you are conducting the data collection, you have some control over it. But when you leave it to the research participants, and if the questionnaire is unnecessarily long, there will definitely be some participants who will not fill up the data accurately or completely. In that regard, you must recognize research which, which has participants which did not fill the data correctly or respond to the survey correctly. And similarly, you must recognize similar participants in your research as well and omit them or include their data in a way that recognizes this incomplete response. The final threat to internal validity is called statistical regression, which has a tendency of a very high or low values towards to move towards the mean or average. Let me give you an example. A lecturer is trying to show the improvement in student performance by introducing a new method of testing or assessment or learning. What the lecturer says is give me 40 of the worst students and I guarantee that they will show immediate improvement right after my treatment, which could be the new learning technique. The problem with this is that if she has taken or he has taken the 50 or the 40 worst students, the high probability of them showing an improvement is definitely there instead of having a fair go at all students. If they are high achievers and the high achievers also show an improvement, then that research becomes statistically significant because there was a there was no deliberate effort to show an improvement only in the weak students the improvement also reflected in the high achiever students as well. So this is again, this can be recognized as a bias or a threat to the internal validity where the, the researcher is kind of choosing to conduct research among participants, which will show a movement towards the mean or the standard deviation. With that today, we have discussed the six threats, the six main threats. There are other threats as well, which I will not go too much into detail, but some threats are called experimental mortality, which is called the loss of subjects, where some subjects may die if the research goes on for a longer time or during the research, some subjects may die. Or there could be other uh, threats as well, but these are the top six that I thought I should discuss. Make sure that you research up on the other threats as well. And uh, for example, this is called John Henry effect. 
John Henry was a worker who outperformed a machine under an experimental setting because he was aware that his performance was being compared with that of a machine. So like this, there are a few more that you might find in the books, but I thought I'll just quickly summarize the six main threats to internal validity with easy to understand examples. In my next video, I will talk about the threats to the external validity of a research, which should be addressed by you as well as recognized by you when you are critiquing literature, past literature during your literature review. This is Dr. Sam, your online thesis guide and advisor with Search Research. Thank you for watching my channel and thank you for subscribing. Bye for now.